to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public input. Time and place for discussion items not already on the agenda with time limit of three minutes each. Thank you, Mayor. Just want to take a minute to introduce everybody to Officer Esteban Gutierrez. Um, been back with us since mid April and usually working overnight. So, um, went to days this week a little bit, loving days. Uh, <laughs> so, I just want to take a minute to introduce him to you. And uh, if you have any questions for him, we have to answer those too. Welcome. Thank you. Happy, Happy so far. Yeah. Both times are great and good answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your boss is right there. Just practice that and You're practice. Every, everything's that. good except for the chief. Yeah. <laughs> we can talk about her. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. We'll talk later. Thank you. Discussion of possible action in reference to Southeast Lynn Lost Fund Allocation. So uh, every year we've always given um, out of the loss program, it's local option sales tax. Uh, it's supposed to be money allocated kind of for the whole community, different ideas. So we always gave $4,000 to Southeast Lynn for the before and after school program. Um, that is no longer happening, but Nicole uh, has other programs that she's listed in your packet, and she's here to discuss those with you and try to repurpose that money elsewhere. Yeah, thanks. So um, just wanted to give kind of an overview of the things, the different programs we have specifically, was looking at the ones that focus on youth since the after school program was geared towards youth. So got them listed there, but our Parks and Rec scholarships, scholarships for Lisbon kids to use the Lester Burrish Center and Wellness Center in Mount Vernon. Uh, we do free school supplies every year and that keeps growing each year. More kids are needing help with that. Um, the pool tax is another thing that keeps growing. Probably seen the last couple of years we've had to do extra fundraising to try to cover the families that want to use the pool. And then we're doing the free gardening and art classes throughout the summer and the early out activities during the school year. So we think that it would be appropriate to use any of those funds that have been used for the after school program in the past. We haven't had anybody asking for the after school program, haven't had anybody looking for that. Um, but these, these other programs are, are popular and, and growing, so I uh, wanted to put that up for consideration. A um, couple of numbers. For the pool passes this year, this summer, just for Lisbon families, our cost is just under $4,000 total. Um, for school supplies last year, for just Lisbon students, just under $2,000 uh, that we spent on that. And then spent about 200 this year on the Parks and Rec scholarships for listening kids. And I think there are probably more families that might utilize that if it was a little more, um, you know, public. we haven't publicized it a lot in the past just because we haven't had a lot of funds for it. So it's kind of some of the same families that have used it a few times or word of mouth. Um, then the LBC scholarships, this year we've spent about $800 on Lisbon families to utilize that program. Um, does, does Mount Vernon fund your organization as well? They do, yeah. I mean, the, the, I'm, just take exception to the pool passes thing. I mean, we have a free pool. Wow. And so. Lisbon is funding pool passes so that Lisbon kids can go to Mount Vernon's pool. So it's mostly, I'd say it's mostly the um, elementary and middle school age kids that are using the, the, the full pool um, rather than the more like the toddlers, little ones that are using that. And Mount Vernon doesn't give us any kind of a stipend on that. that I mean, a discount on those. They do give us a slight discount for the families that we sponsor. So for the, those, those pool packs, it's a scholarship. Um, so we cover 75% of the cost and the family covers 
Um, and that's traditionally just come from Southeast Lynn fund, general funds. Um, but the last few years, there's been so much interest that we've um, fundraised from the community for that as well. Um, the city of Mount Vernon did give direct funding to us when the LBC opened to help fund scholarships. And that's been depleted. They will probably replenish that. But it was just um, if, if we wanted you know, any city funding to go to specifically listed families. I, don't, I mean, I don't have any problem. It, how, do you know how much Mount Vernon charges for a family? For like, yeah, for the LBC, it's I believe it's one hundred and eighty dollars for three months for a family. For the pool pass, it's one hundred and sixty for the summer. So it being the same as those months. Okay. So and does it is I mean the four thousand? I mean that's only thirty three, thirty three um families. Um, how do they determine who gets it? Yeah, it's based on financial need. Um, so it's people who are already qualified for like the free school lunches or Medicaid or Hawkeye or already qualified for those programs. Or a food pantry. A lot of those are food pantry things. Uh, I mean, and I, I see where you're coming from, Nate, about the splash pad. I mean, if you're 14, 15, you want to go splash pad? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. well, and I don't, I don't feel so, like if you if you're interested in one of these programs and not any, I just wanted to give you the layout of all of the possibilities. So, just a couple things too. Uh, Travis and Drake can chime in here. Um, typically, our biggest problems over there are when 13 and 14 year olds are there causing problems. So, um, <laughs> it's okay. To <laughs> 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 we can absolutely set the <laughs> The other thing, and I just didn't have enough time from after speaking to Nicole, um, one thing I'm looking at in the future is possibly funding this out of TIF because there's a portion of that that's low to moderate income. I don't know if this, any of this will qualify, but going forward in the future, it might be an opportunity for us to um, take advantage of that too. So I'll look into that for the future funding. But okay. It's not like the, the, the pool's a big money maker for Mount Vernon no. in any stretch of the but just seemed odd that Lisbon funds were put into a not for a program like that. I think it's red every year. Yeah, what's that? It's red every year. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I'm sure it is. So, okay. And then Mount Vernon has their own program for low income Mount Vernon families, right? No. Don't, don't they give you a number of scholarships for Mount Vernon families? For the pool? For the pool. So no. It all comes from, from just our general funds. So I'm just saying for city of Lisbon funds, we would use it just for Lisbon families. But no, they don't specifically fund it. And how much would we give you for after school? Four thousand. Four thousand. So we set aside for that. Yeah. And they have not received that yet this year, for this fiscal year. Which was, I think, the reason for the reach out, right? That it was it is, there yes, because the funds are there. Yeah. Just the after school program never took place. So, you guys can make a decision tonight to let them have this for other purposes. I, you know, I, this is my opinion. I just, you know, I mean, I think Nicole would be, she's wise enough to know what she needs the money for. I mean, it's 4000 when she's out of it, she's out of it. I'm kind of on that same page. Uh, I'm in favor of it. Yeah. As as am I. I just that just stuck out in my in my uh, as I was reading this. The yeah. Work your question, but otherwise, yeah, I'm in support of it as well. Do I need a motion? Motion to approve Nicole to kind of use her best judgment of what the four thousand. Second. Yeah. Second. Motion and second. Aye. 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 Thank you, Nicole. Perfect. Thanks, Nicole. Discussion of possible action in reference to city insurance renewal. All right. Um, this page here in your packet, if you can pull this up and look at it. Um, the top, what I'll call this top left box, um, that is our current um, plan for city benefits for employees. Um, and as you can see, uh, the increase is 11.73% at 17,000. Um, 
one thing that I know that the council has always shared in the past, if there was ever opportunities to um, offer a better benefit uh, for a small amount of cost um, to bring it your way. Uh, Jamie Hopkins is on uh, from Sagacity. He is our broker for our insurance. Um, I had him come tonight to go over this. Um, I obviously, in my position, take it, you know, I take the benefit package here, so I feel a little awkward discussing it. And um, so Jamie is here to do that and talk that over with you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. Can everybody hear me? Yep. yep. Okay, um, one thing I wanted to ask um, somebody on your end to do is I can't share screen and uh, it says host disabled. So I didn't know if that's a uh, feature that you guys have on your laptop over there. Maybe uh, somebody could look at that while I'm talking. Um, I, although if everybody's got it in front of you, I can also, um, I can also just step you through that. Okay, good. Um, all right, let me just find the right spot. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to treat this a little bit and uh, okay, so I'm just going to give you a primer on how I set these boxes up and uh, ultimately <clears throat> what I uh, am going to illustrate is the cost if you stayed in the same place and then the cost if you decided to bring your deductible and out of pocket match. Uh, down just a little bit to have a, a richer benefit for the employees for City of Lisbon. So um, this box on the top left, uh, this, so this is the deductible and uh, right now what's going on <clears throat> is that you have a Walmart plan in place that has a $4,000 base plan and then what the city does is basically using city funds they buy down that $4,000 deductible through a $1,000 deductible. So that's four thousand for a single, eight thousand for a family, bought down to one thousand and two thousand for a family. Now the next boxes are the out-of-pocket max, and I'll just take a brief second and explain how that works. So um, when the employee hits one thousand dollars of cost uh, in medical care, <clears throat> then um, basically what happens is that. The, the city and Walmart split with the employee and they say, okay, well, Walmart will pay 70% of the additional cost, the employee will pay 30% of the additional cost, up to a maximum of $4,000 out-of-pocket max for a single. Actually, I think it's 80-20. Uh, between the city and Walmart, they split after $1,000, where the employee only pays 20% of the costs above that up to a maximum of $4,000 and $8,000 for a family. So this on the left is the Walmart base plan and then the city invests funds to uh, buy down claims in this column and this is what the employee sees. And some employees understand this buy down concept better than others. If the employee doesn't use it very often then they probably wouldn't need a primer. But uh, most of the time when they go to the provider they get those uh, inline benefits and uh, sometimes there's some go-between to, to work out the details, but those are the benefits that your employees currently enjoy. So if, uh, if we add up some costs, um, $161,930 is annual cost for the Walmart base plan plus the uh, claims trend on that buy-down. Now what I've got below that is $17,000 is, is the change. So $161,930 is $17,000 per year more, happened to be a, 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 actually a round number which is interesting. So $17,000 is your increase if you chose to do nothing today. And that equates to 11.73% increase. Now just for a point of clarity, uh, these are uh, these are net prices because uh, on top of that is Connie Myers pricing of, a, uh, of about 12,763 for uh, over the next year. I've taken those out of these costs because those aren't city costs. Connie's not city costs. Um, so then uh, let's go down lower and let's look at the uh, the boxes below that. And you've got 
your same, uh, you'll notice that the price is the same for the Walmart $4,000 plan. That base plan is $144,930 and $144,930 here. So the variable, and where, um, where it wouldn't be that hard to offer uh, city employees a little bit richer benefit, is that instead of a $1,000 deductible, what if you bought this deductible down to $500 per employee? thousand dollars per family and instead of four eight for the out-of-pocket max it would end up being two and four um, so if you did this uh, off to the right you see my text box and it, and it says uh, reducing your deductible and out-of-pocket max aligns you with most municipal levels uh, most municipalities I found have five hundred dollar deductible some have lower than that. Occasionally, you'll run into someone that has higher than that. But without question, uh, the cities that have a little bit higher deductibles than a neighboring city that's got a lower deductible, you tend to lose law enforcement officers. Uh, there are other positions too, but that's the most typical one where you'll have, uh, you know, a police officer shopping one city versus the next, and sometimes that additional deductible will. <laughs> cause that uh, prospective employee to go to city B that's got a little bit richer deductible. So if the city bought down that benefit, you'll notice that the Walmart plan doesn't change at all. What's, what changes is the variable cost in the buy down or the partial self fund is what it's also called. So up above we have a, a cost of 161,930, uh, which is 17,000 more. Doing this would only be an increase of around $6,400. So it would go to $167,330, and instead of $17,000 worth of increase, you'd take $22,400 worth of increase. And that, instead of being 11.73, ends up being about a 15% increase. That's really not a lot of money, an additional $6,400 um, in, in projected expenses to be able to show you know, twice as rich of a benefit, theoretically. And then, uh, <clears throat> to the right of that at the bottom, I showed an example that has a zero dollar deductible. Um, zero dollar deductibles are incredible recruiting tools, and I don't know what challenges uh, the city has had finding staff, but uh, if you have had a challenge finding staff, zero dollar deductible is a really, really attractive thing to show a prospective employee. What I've shown here is zero dollar uh, single, zero dollar family, and then uh, the employee would be responsible for a seven hundred and fifty dollar out of pocket max or a fifteen hundred dollar out of pocket max. Um, that ends up being an additional twenty three six, twenty three thousand six hundred. So on the top left, you've got a seventeen thousand dollar increase compared to this version being a forty thousand six hundred dollar increase. And instead of 11.73, this would end up being a 28% increase. Um, you could also do something in the middle. I mean, I showed a 500 and I showed a zero. You could do a 250, and it would fall somewhere between that 22.4 and that 40,006. So um, I'm going to go to the text up on the, the top right sort of quadrant. Just give you my final thoughts and I'd be happy to take uh, questions or, or any thoughts you guys might have. So uh, your current partial self fund buys down the Walmart 4,000, 8,000 single family deductible to 1,000, 2,000 single family. Below are two examples of the cost based on the current claims trend to offer a lower deductible and out-of-pocket max. The benefit to the city is stronger retention and more effective recruitment as well as alignment with nearby cities. And I would say uh, that, that's the biggest consideration. Were I in your shoes, uh, I would like somebody's advice that says, hey, uh, you, you probably should at least match or exceed the cities around you to ensure that you have a, an easier time finding people now and in the future. Uh, the cost versus benefit seems relatively low compared to losing an applicant in favor of a better benefit with a nearby city. That's just a, a objective thought. Um, yeah, I will also tell you that uh, these are not hard numbers. So what I've done is, the city doesn't, <clears throat> the city doesn't spend. Okay, so let's take uh, employee A. Um, they they had uh, 
$50,000 in claims this year. Well, in that particular case, the city spent, you know, all $3,000 getting, uh, getting between that $1,000 and that $4,000 when Wellmark takes over. Employee A doesn't happen very often. Uh, employee B uh, goes to, you know, an ordinary doctor's appointment once or twice a year, fills a couple of prescriptions, and they don't even dip into that, thousand, they don't even clear that $1,000 deductible. So most of the people on your plan are not even dipping into your partial self-funding that you offer because they just don't use the, the benefits as much. So claims funding at 20%, basically uh, I'm saying of the total risk of all your employees hitting all of these levels, your current, fund, your current spending is at about 20% of that match risk. So these numbers I've calculated on a, on a funding trend of about 20%. You could have a terrible year and that could go up to 30, 35%. You could have a great year and that could be as low as uh, you know, eight to 12. So it changes a little bit uh, every year and uh, part of the work that I do for the city is to keep Brandon in touch with, you know, we do a mid-year look and say, hey, how are claims running? What kind of claims year are you having? Uh, you, had, you had one person with some serious claims this year, but you know, other people that really haven't. So ultimately you're trending pretty well. So that's me doing a lot of talking. Um, how, can I, uh, how can I respond or reflect any questions or thoughts you guys might have? Questions, guys? What's the buffer in town, Doug? Uh, I have to pull it up better. Or out of pocket, I think. Yeah, he's, Jamie does ours as well, um, but it's I think the it's seven fifty and fifteen hundred for the uh, uh, out of pocket. Out of pocket. Yeah, the out of pocket. Which one there? It's Jamie. You know, Mount Vernon's. It's like before. It's we just switched to a different program too. So. Um, well, you know, I I I wouldn't have said this out loud if you weren't in the room, Doug. But since uh. You asked me the question, and technically you are my client. Um, Mount Vernon has a zero dollar deductible, which is a very generous benefit. Very few, very few cities in Iowa offer that, and uh, I bet they don't have a lot of recruiting products. We have any questions for him? Discussion? I, yeah, I guess the, the, you know, I just threw a lot of numbers and and uh, statistics your way, but it seems to me like uh, if if there's extra money in the kitty, this would be a wise place to, to make an investment. And uh, it's relatively low comparatively. You, you, you're already seeing, you're hearing a lot of sunk costs in the benefits. So to reach just a little bit farther in order to, to offer something that is truly a value, um, that's a recommend. I don't have any, uh, I don't have any vested interest. I don't have any financial gain. Uh, I'm, I'm purely an objective. Uh, well, I'm not objective. I, I work for you guys ultimately, but I'm objective in terms of this opinion because it doesn't uh, benefit me one way or the other. But I do think it's a positive step. Either one of those two options. Here's my opinion. You know, we've fought. We've been going for the last three years, three, four years, of increasing salaries to try to get them more competitive with other cities. Um, I'm not saying which one. It's going to be one of the bottom two of the Iowa. <coughs> um, it's a benefit for the employees that, you know, if they don't spend, I mean, if they don't get hurt or a lot of sick time, it's actually a benefit for us where we could offer the wage that we're offering and say, hey, we only got this deductible, this is our insurance. You got really good insurance here. We not might not be the top of the scale for Hey, but you got really good insurance here. So I mean, that's how I kind of look at it. I'm, I'm in favor of being more competitive, whether it's a zero or, or the other one. Uh, <coughs> I, I I just think it just is more enticing. And I would hate to see any of our employees go broke if something happened to them because they've got so many medical expenses. That's the last burden I would want to see on any of the employees. So you got 
to get insurances. When would the when would this go into effect? July. So so how this comes about is every year I meet with Jamie to go over the plan, kind of where we're at. And then he throws different ideas out there and I thought you know, for the sixty four hundred I thought it was worthwhile at least having him talk to you about it. Um, and then he presented the other one. Um, I don't know if you try one and correct me if I'm wrong, this can always like you can always flip back back and forth, correct? You you can each year for July we can make a different decision. Um, although you know, going to zero and then pulling it back to 500, I'm not sure, it doesn't feel like a stable, um, doesn't feel like a stable look. So maybe you do go with, uh, you know, a little less aggressive this year at the 500 and then, you know, if it feels positive, you can always get richer, harder to get leaner and not get some pushback. Yeah, How much did you have budgeted for insurance? I mean, let me just ask you. I want to say we did a 15 or 16% increase. See, the problem is when you do budget, Jamie can. Okay, so you did a 15%, so that would be like the second one. Then. Correct. Because you don't know. We just find out. Is it March or April, Jamie? We find out when, when Walmart yeah. comes out with their renewal. So what's bad about this is you have to forecast, and we always, it's always 10 to 15%. I'm pretty confident we went 15% higher based on. Um, what Jamie's recommendation was. Okay. So yeah, we, it sounds like he has to pick a number in you know February, maybe March, but that's how it's a guess number because this information doesn't come available to you until you know April, something like that, May maybe. Okay, so we I'm, I'm talking to Christine and Brandon right now. So we've budgeted 15 percent. Correct. Somewhere around there, maybe a little bit more. So you've already budgeted if we would have had to go up 22 thousand. So. The difference between the other two would be not knowing this. I just budgeted thousand. our increase. See, it was eleven seventy three. I budgeted fifteen. Yeah, but no, I was not. Yeah. So the from going to the second one to the first one, the third one, it'd be an increase of eighteen thousand two hundred dollars. Oh um, yes, that's correct. Do you have the money to pay for that if they were if the council would choose that? Um, yeah, the, let's see here, when, when is the employee benefit, levy benefit, is that November we, that that goes into effect for July, or does that start, yeah, um, so you'd have to, you'd have to take it out of the general. And I'm also, I agree with Jamie too, where, you know, if you have the second one, and, you know, you didn't have a lot of claims on it, you could look at going to the third one. If you have a third one, you have a lot of claims, you're going to be screwed come next time. Yeah. Let the record I'm show I know it's like crude. I'm in the support of the lower left program. I am too. That's kind of what I was leaning on. And if we, That's obviously, the budget is in that range anyways, it makes sense to go that and you know, next year they can revisit, the council next year can revisit. Exactly. Any questions for Jamie? I Yeah, that's a motion. I make a motion to do the enhanced benefit, which is the $500 or deductible per person, 1000 per family, um, for the increase of 15%. Yeah, I'll motion to have a second. I'll second. Nate. Aye. Mike. Aye. John. Aye. Sarah. Aye. Thank you very much, Jamie, for explaining that to us. Thank you. Just a little one, I guess the, the last parting thought, because uh, I could be on the same call with you guys next year. 15% is somewhat variable. Could be less than that, could be a couple points more than that. I just want to make sure that that's in the air because we can't predict what those claims look like for sure. But uh, I think this is a this is a, a, a wise cost analysis. I'm not trying to be aggressive to push something through. I think it makes sense. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. All right, guys, thank you. Custom possible action in reference to purchasing hearing protection. Um, so you see this quote that I attached, and I also 
uh, showed you the grant that I applied for through our work comp provider. Um, and then you saw the email about uh, thanks but no thanks. Uh, the interesting part about this is IMWCA, two days or maybe the next day after they sent the email, sent out all the pamphlets to everybody about recommending hearing protection for their employees and all this stuff. So, um, be it as it may, um, we do have some funds available um, in this year's budget, as you know, we're winding down um, for some hearing protection. Um, and then also um, in the packet, um, advanced hearing comes to town annually. And they've offered to test our employees each year for free to offer a hearing test. Um, we've already got a baseline, uh, thanks to them for that, and that was provided with this grant. Um, so we can continue to monitor the data as we go forward. But um, I did some calculation today. I did put on here um, July minor equipment, which we did budget for, but I'm thinking I can get it out of this budget. Um, what do we do if our employees don't use it? Just kind of put it in there. Yeah, I think we're going to probably have to create a policy, and uh, when noise is above a threshold that would affect hearing loss, they're going to have to. I mean, I can see that a bigger problem than <laughs> before. Now, I'm a, I, trust me, because I answer the phone all the time uh, with my ear ringing um, from not doing it, so I'm 100% in favor of it, but the people have to wear them. I think the biggest thing, Travis, you can talk about too, but uh, the chipping and the leaf fact are the two big, are the big things. And then when you're around equipment digging a grave, um, you can't communicate, and this allows communication as well as sound. Is there a headset? Like, is there a microphone? Yeah. That's good. That's nice. So, um, I think it's it's a safety, an overall safety uh, thing, just for the. Whole project, let alone safety for the years as well. We needed this when we got the cart for the Leafs. There is zero communication from the guy on the back of that trailer with the guy in the truck, and that's that's our number one safety thing. And when we started looking into this, we found a numerous array of different things that worked great with this, but not so great this. Um, at the last conference I was at. I talked to multiple cities that have this style. Um, Hiawatha does, Solon does, um, West Des Moines, uh, just a bunch of people that's used this and used it for years and are confident that this is what they can get their employees to use on a regular basis. So. Is, is this multi-channel? So if the LEAF crew is out, two of them are out with these things and someone's doing a grave at the cemetery are they going to be talking to each other or no this is because it's a line of sight okay. so okay. this actually has a radio a limited range, yeah uh, 600 that's a like a walmart walkie-talkie yeah. type of thing versus a radio frequency so if two guys are doing the chipping and two guys are out doing something at the cemetery we have it's not going to interfere no. with the people chipping right no okay well, I'm in favor of it. Yeah. Oh, I am too. I would much rather be safe in, so on all aspects. No motion for point. We have a second. Second. No motion for second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Discussion of public action and reference to change order number two to Arcadia Carrico. So, uh, Eric is gone, so Dave had to cover a meeting for Eric, so either one of them cannot be here tonight. However, um, on the change order number two, um, there, there was a few alignment changes, as you can see, described up here that only made sense to do to create less issue in the future. It also would speed up the process of the work being done in that area. Uh, but the majority of this is the intersection of Market and Washington. And I know I talked to Doug one day when he was in here. Um, when they cored that out, um, I had actually gone over to look at the, the gutter and they had a roller in rolling that area out. And it was very similar to like a waterbed material. 
where when you were moving, the, the ground over here was moving ahead of it. So it's uh, not very good soil. So we had no choice. Uh, we could have put the concrete there, but it would not have lasted. Um, so we really had no choice other than to um, core out that foundation, um, put in geogrid, uh, rock, a French drain system, um, which is going to actually end up coming down in front of City Hall, the tile, and then go down to First Avenue. Uh, and then this way, it firmed it up, um, did everything that, that, um, that was requested by the engineer. And this should solidify for years to come. So, as you can see in this bid, that was the, the vast majority of the program. What's that? Yeah, it is. Yeah, 28. The very first thing discussing. 28,340. It has B and K on it. You're probably looking for Brecky, but B and K is the big symbol on it. B and K. I'm still on the headset thing. I was going to say, oh, keep looking at the headset. Sorry. It's right there. It's a. I thought there was something. Okay, we got it. I mean, it's, you know, it just sucks that, you know, we. You can't anticipate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and this is just a big one. I mean, it's, you know. I think we, and we knew going into this that there was going to be issues, underlying issues that we weren't aware of. And, and you also, you also got to realize. You know, we accepted a bid that was quite a bit cheaper than this. Oh, yeah. Bid. You know, yeah. So, I mean, we have a little, I'm not saying that we want to spend them up to that second bid, but I mean, so, they need a motion to pay it. I make a motion to pay the um, Brecky Panicle in the amount of 21. Nope. No, sorry. 28. You're just accepting the change order right now. Or change, change order. order. Sure. It's, yep, sorry. Make, Make a motion ahead. to accept the change order. Thank you. To Brecky Mechanical. No motion, no second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Discussion of possible action in reference to payment to pay estimate number two from Brecky Mechanical in the amount of $221,732.43. and so this came from V and K, and they went over all the documents and the quantities, and it matched their calculations. So they request that we pay that amount. This is, cost. is that what this corner cost is? No, 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 no. This is just part of the project. This is yeah. their payment number two. As they get work done, they're going to keep submitting yep. these bills. Motion we'll we'll approved. Motion we'll we'll approved. A second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Public hearing for zoning chapter 165 update. Motion to go into public hearing. Second. A motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Public hearing. All right, this is for the uh, Mike Ryland garage, if you recall. Um, and this, I, per March request, um, we went ahead and added uh, or added P and Z meeting. And if you look on page two of this document, it's got the triangular design there. Two uh, A. We added in lots over one acre accessory buildings or structure may be erected in the front side or side as long as it's within the front and side setbacks. An accessory building or structure may be erected prior. The primary structure only if the building permits are submitted and issued at the same time for both the primary and accessory building structures and completed within the 12 months of the date that the permits are issued. That last part um, is already part of the ordinance up above, so we added it there. So um, really we're only adding <coughs> part about in lots over one acre. Um, they can build in the front side as long as they're within the front side, back and the side. And then the side setback, as long as they are within the side, the front, and the back. Any motions? Any motion to go to mm -hmm. Steve, it's open. Right? Yep. Motion to go to full session. So moved. A motion to second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, First reading of Ordinance 04 2023 update to change, update to Chapter 165 Supplemental District Regulations 
Council suspension of rules and place in the third and final reading. Motion to approve the first reading. We have a motion to approve the first reading. Do I have a second? Second. Sarah. Aye. John. Aye. Mike. Aye. Nate. Aye. And do I have a motion to suspend the rules? Okay. We did talk to him at the last when he was here. Uh, he's kind of he said that there was kind of uh, we're waiting to see if there's any response. I've gotten none in reference to this other than support. Um, so I think this is inevitable. P and Z okayed it, thought it was a good idea. Um, so I think I would feel comfortable doing it, but that's up to you. I'll make a motion to suspend the rules and place the ordinance on the third and final reading. I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I have a motion for a third reading, third and final reading. I make a motion for the third and final reading. Uh, motion and a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think we'll call. Yeah, do you want to call for that one, yeah. please? Sarah? Aye. John? Aye. Mike? Aye. 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 Discussion and possible action in reference to employee union contract. All right, so you should have the contract in there. We can go over some of this stuff. Uh, did everybody read the packet? I kind of, that's the Reader's Digest version, I guess. And I'll kind of go off that. Um, so one thing is, uh, you know, when you go through this, we try to look at um, things that are that have occurred um, or that are close to occurring that uh, may cause an issue with what's happening or what's currently in the contract. So um, the other thing too is if there's a way to present an added benefit to an employee that really doesn't cost any kind of money, but um, it might be a nice thing to have for them, um, we always look for ways to do that too. So I'll kind of go over this um, as we go. Um, Travis and I met, kind of went over this. I ran everything through John and um, Nate. So um, the first thing is in Article 4, um, we're requesting the change to begin this, the insurance on the first day of the calendar month following the hire date. Um, the reason for that is because if, you're, if somebody was to leave an employer and come to work here, regardless of their circumstance, they're covered by insurance through the end of the month. So when they start here, if they started on the 15th of the month, they're covered by their previous employer until the first. We can't even add them to the first until the first. Um, but what this does is there was a chance um, because it said by the first of the month following the, it could have, you could have had a gap, I guess, and we've, we ran into this before. So we just made the language change to coincide with not having a gap. Um, Article 5 was an easy one. We moved, removed the PD language. Article 6, um, so that was, uh, if, if what we currently have right now was for employees to on vacation time, they have to be here one full year before they get two weeks of time. That may have been a thing back in the 90s, early 2000s, but it's really not anymore. So what we'd like to do is add, um, after two months, the employees will receive 40 of their 80 hours so that they can use it. Um, and then, I don't talk about that, and then also requesting a change. Um, instead of carrying over five days and use it in the first, um, 90 days, we want to change it to carry over 10 days and use it in 180. So we have situations now where employees choose, I guess, feel like they can't get away, um, or if they go to carry over and let's say their anniversary is in February or a cold month, they may not have anywhere to go other than just sit at home and this gives them a little bit more flexibility to use their time when they choose to use their time. So. Expanding the carryover from 5 to 10, and then from 90 days to 180 days. And feel free to stop me anytime. I'm just going to keep going here. Feel free to stop me anytime if you uh, need it. 
Um, Article 7, um, there's discussion, I know Travis, I ran into this at uh, one of the league um, meetings and Travis had the same thing at one of his conferences. Um, they're requesting to add Martin Luther King Day um, to January as a paid holiday. Um, as I said in here, it's been a topic of many discussions. It's been on ClerkNet um, along with some other dates. Um, but several cities are starting to, if they haven't had this, they're starting to change this. So um, I talked to John and uh, Nate about that and they didn't see an issue with it. Um, Article 8 is another easy change. Um, our coverage for life insurance starts at 50000 The contract's got 25000 We can't buy any less than that. So it's just changing it to what it is. Um, so it's 50000 worth of coverage uh, because that's what it is. Rolling back yep. to the Martin Luther King yep. example, what happens if there's, I mean, that's not a, you're, you're going to have it, everybody's going to have it off or be paid for it, correct? Well, they're getting paid anyway, but they'll just have the day off, correct. <clears throat> well, I guess I'm confused. I thought you said they weren't being paid before. They're working it and getting paid. It doesn't work. be a day off. They're working. Work. Right. 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 What, what's happened is, is there's um, people that are hired that choose to celebrate that and have created issues with places about not having that as a holiday. And obviously with the world, things are changing and, and happening. So um, there's a lot of people adding this back and just kind of changing with the time. So uh, there's probably about 50% of the cities right now that have it. Um, there's also, they've added Juneteenth. Um, which obviously we're not looking to do, um, but yeah, next Monday my wife has that day. Yeah, so it's just things are changing. Um, and I'm not I'm not here to compare. I know that I mean I had it at, you know before we had 12 paid holidays here we have 11. Some people don't call it Martin Luther King they give them a floating holiday. That's another another thing that people have. So. Um, does that answer? Since you're not, it's not costing anymore. You're still paying the same whether they're here yeah, or they're not. Yep. It's, it's just they're not getting work out. Of it. Right. Correct. So I, well, I want to say something really bad here, but I didn't. You just like you okay? I mean, <laughs> all right. Um, so Article nine. We updated the starting wage, and this was through personnel. Um, We've just, so whatever the cost of living increase is each year, we've upped that starting pay. So that way, if it, the problem was before it stayed the same for so long and we couldn't get people to come to work here because the starting wage was the same in 2013 as it was in 2019. So what you should be doing is adding to that whatever your cost of living is so that at least you're keeping up with the cost of living increase. So the 20, like under level 2102, Next year will be five percent higher. If that's accepted, yes. Yep. And then we added the entry level to give us a little bit more flexibility um, to hire at a public works one or say, hey, this person's green. Uh, they, they've never had this type of job or for whatever reason. So we added that as well. Are all of our employees right now these ones? Great ones. Yeah. This is new. The entry is not. No, I mean, but they consider it a public uh, public works one. one. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Yep. Um, so, um, then on the wages, uh, unions requested a 5% cost of living raise each year for the next three years. Um, and I put the note in here with the spike of CPI, uh, which is consumer price index over the last three years. Um, 2021 CPI was 4.7%. 2022 is 8%, and so far this year it's at 5.8, and that's an average. Um, they've also agreed that, or have the understanding that when we give the merit raises, um, that 
you know, if, if, if CPI drops to a half a percent or two percent or it goes negative or whatever the case may be, that um, they were, they're not expected to receive that extra merit raise um, if the gap is significant or whatever. So, um, and I did some checking around. Some people are giving six five four. Some people are giving five five four with a with a dollar bonus. It's just everybody's kind of in that in that ballpark. I think we talked about that previously. So, um, Article thirteen. Um, so this is a sick leave conversion. Um, we have one employee right now that is uh, maxed out on sick leave. So essentially, eight hours a month is basically added and then taken back off their books. Um, one thing that I created um, at another place was adding a conversion. Um, 700 hours is based on long-term disability, so 686 gets you to long-term dis disability. That's six months worth of time work. Um, thought is after after that one time a year on your anniversary um, you can convert any hours over 700 two to one to vacation the thought of that is um, it's just a one-time thing you know each year um, it incentivizes employees to build their sick leave so one you know, we all get older things happen two um, you know if something serious happens they'd have that time and then three they can get to 700 and they know that if they wanted to add vacation hours, they come to work and not use their sick leave or abuse it. Um, so it's just kind of a good incentive tool. So um, they convert two hours to one on vacation once a year on their anniversary as long as the conversion, uh, the, after the conversion they have no less than 700 hours in their bank. So if they got eight hours or 800 hours, they can take take it down to 700 and get 50 hours of vacation, which is a day and a uh, a week and one and a half days. And you got to realize, I mean, somebody that's over 700 hours, um, I think he's seven days. I mean, to get 700 hours, that's that's a lot of days to call him not an insect. I don't have a problem with that. Um, and then the one thing I didn't add, and I know that we had talked about this previously, and I talked a little bit even today with John. Um, and this is in the handbook as well. If you, if you turn to page 10, it's under Article 9 of the salaries where it talks about the entry level. Um, if you go down and look at the longevity pay, and Travis and I were trying to come up with something, and I know that I talked to Nate and John and at one time about this, and they wanted some comparables um, to see what other places were doing. So. One thing you see, it starts five. Is everybody there? Can I see this? So five to nine ends up going to thirty-six to forty years. Well, with with the rule of IPERS, you know you can retire at fifty-five. So you, in a sense, have to start here when you're fifteen to ever reach this cap. So everything that I've seen and read, um, some some of it goes to twenty-five, some goes to twenty. Um, the other thing too is if you start at the top and work your way down to what this equals out to, it's two hundred eight dollars, three hundred and twelve, four sixteen, five twenty, six twenty four, eight thirty two, and a thousand forty. Um, of everything that I've compared to, this is extremely low. Um, but again, this is also in the handbook, so I I don't want to feel like I'm fighting myself here, but. Um, this would be the only thing other than the 5% raise that you would give the contract or employees would be uh, if you chose to increase the longevity. Um, a couple options um, were 5 to 10 years at 500, 10 to 15 was 1,000, 15 to 20 was 1,500, and 20 years and up was 2,000, and that's what our neighbors have. Um, Travis and I kind of talked and thought maybe instead of that, like kind of for now, just go 600, 900, 1200, and 1500. So 600 for 5 to 10, 10 to 15 at 900, 15 to 20 at 1200, and 21 years and up, 1500. But again, I didn't feel comfortable putting in this because I'm, I'm representing you on this, and um, I think it should be a decision you guys 
make for that. And if it's something you want to do a different day, that that's fine too. But those were the those were the main changes or discussion pieces. I mean, we do it a different day. We have to open the contract unless we, you gave yeah, more. Agreed to open the contract. Yeah. I mean, if we want to do it now, you can do it now. I'm just saying, if we do it later, we're not taking the union to agree to open the contract. But, I mean, we're giving them money, they probably wouldn't have any problem with it. But I'm giving you so little time to think about it. I know this is new, but I didn't want to put this in here because I, it's in the handbook as well. So I, And I think if we change this, we need to change the handbook. It should yeah, be well. mirror across the board, right? I mean, that makes total sense. That's what we've typically done. We've made the handbook match. Yep. I mean, actually, you can, if we accept it, I mean, we could make the change next, the next come on, council meeting, and then go to effect July, July 1st. But the only thing is, I just want to get this printed and going. That's kind of why we met tonight, because it goes into effect July 1, and it's got to still go to the local yet. I, I think the last scale you gave there is fine. 3,6,9,12? Or 3,6,9,12? Yep. Six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Then we got a problem with that? No, I like it. I like it too. Okay. We can change it now from six, nine. All right, what's next on the contract? That's maybe it. Maybe just you guys. I was asking questions or I just want to make sure everybody understands it and if you have any questions about anything in there please let me know. Again most of this is just either things that are coming into play or have come into play that just need tweaked. Um, nine, nine seven you can let me what's that? Nine seven. What do you got there? So you should replace the officer for wash and wear, you know. Thousand dollars per year for the police officers. What do you got, me, Doug? Where's that? At? Ninety-seven. Well, what's what do you mean? Oh, nine point seven. Nine point seven. Oh, I see seven. where he's at. I can, yeah, we can. I think that's still okay. <laughs> <laughs> now you're already getting better insurance. You're getting better <laughs> one. <laughs> and now I can take that out more. of there. All right. Yeah. Good catch. Well, I read this a hundred times. Do you get, you know, you get $400 a, month, a year, Travis, do you guys use that? Yeah. Do they use it all? Everybody. There's, there's a couple, couple times, there's a couple employees that don't use it all, and then a majority do. Are you using it basically on? Like work, boots are the biggest thing. Boots are the biggest thing. I mean, because like one one thing that I like to see is I like to see you all have really nice winter jackets, ones that cut the cold. They like the winter jacket stuff is stuff that normally stay here. They, we do have some that we've got in the past. That's in every five or six years we'll upgrade our jackets, and that's just been a a budgetary thing that doesn't okay. come from okay. okay. And they, they stay just, I, I at guess, the shop. I mean, you know, you can spend a couple hundred dollars on this car. You know, oh, yeah. You know, that's a couple hundred dollars on this budget really yeah. fast. Yeah. yeah, so, and that's actually coming up because I think um, Jason was the last time when Jason was hired is the last time we bought him, so. That's all right. Um, Article 10, the employee training authorization. I mean, it, it now says 100%. We'll, we'll pay 100% for a year or less. What if they can't get in the class? What if the class ain't offered? And, hmm. You know, like let's say it's offered in July and the next one until. That's if the employee resigns. That's if they Yeah, they have to be able to pay back. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah, we had to put that in there to protect us. Yeah, that's that way somebody can't get training on us and then leave. Okay. A lot of that was for the academy. Yeah. That the CDL program. Yeah. Yep. 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 
Anybody else? I don't have anything. Do we need an action on C and D? Uh, just on D, because that you have to approve this per resolution. Yeah. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. You'll approve it with all of them. Sure, it's okay with the contract. Besides that one, the six twelve. Yep, and the X out the same point. So I've got it on there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I move to approve as discussed. There we go. Motion second. I'll second. Um, all favor? Aye. Aye. Roll call. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Now I'm doing the resolution. Now I'm doing the resolution. Resolution 18, 2023, approved union contract. <laughs> so moved. Good job. Thank you. Sarah. Aye. Aye. The first one uh, is from Mary Ann Zaborik, um, off or asking about uh, watering the gardens. Um, she talks about swimming pools, water, and sods, which is currently in our ordinance. Um, I advised her that you know if she wanted to do this, I said I could either share this email or she could come and give her three-minute talk, or we could add it to the agenda. Um, she just wanted to just kind of show you guys the email, so. Um, while I totally respect what she's trying to do and appreciate the fact that people grow their food, um, I believe this has come up before and the problem is going to be the enforcement piece of this. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I mean, basically you're, you're going to get your honest people to tell you that they're doing this and then when we call people and we do this monthly because I have the girls call and say, hey, you know, if there's a if there's a high read, you want to catch it. If you have a leaky toilet, you have this. And I'm just afraid of people saying, well, yeah, I watered my garden. But there's no rhyme or reason to know how much that is. Uh, the thing with the sod is that you don't know that either, but that's a two-month mm -hmm. two month deal. And then with the swimming pools, we have them bring documentation as to how many gallons their pool is, and then we coincide with the read to know where we're at with that. So it's easier to monitor. We also go out and measure it. Yeah. So you can't give me a different dimension than what your pool actually is. Okay. With pools, don't they have to let us know before they? Yes. Correct. They, and, yeah, we have a whole list. And well, yeah, I'm surprised we actually do that. You are using it. Right, so but we're, we're, trying to water, we're, we're not charging sewer. Because there's sewer. nothing this going. It's really not going. Yeah. And they're yeah. saying the same thing with the garden, which would be true, but. And I would be all for it if we could figure out a way to monitor it. We don't have mm -hmm. enough meters to, yeah. I mean, it'd be nearly impossible to do that. So uh, nobody wants to pay the extra for yeah. meters. Which, and right. everybody will have a garden all of a sudden, but not really have a garden. Like, yeah. that's yeah. what I'm afraid no, of. I don't know if, they have a garden. Well, if they come down before and say, I'm watering my lawn. Oh, is that so much higher than normal? No, they have. Well, the, the, the problem is going to be, and I, yes, correct, but I think you said if they did it beforehand. Yeah. If they follow the same protocol as a pool, like, okay, what's the size of your garden? Yeah, I mean, no. but still, I mean, yeah. I just, I don't, I don't think it's a good idea. I think people taking yeah, some, oh, yeah. somehow my mother-in-law gets watering a, a bill for watering and then a separate one for they have a separate the, the normal use but she must have two meters they, they have separate see. meters and that's in our ordinance as you can get an irrigation meter you have to have a plumber come in and okay. install a Y we inspect it put a meter in it and that's what that's meant for so it's in there we have in we have a couple. Yeah. But and so that, that meter, the process, they, we don't, they don't get charged through it, right? Zero sewer. So there is her option. If she wants to have a plumber come in and hook it up, I guess then that would be. I mean, if she's all done whole water. Yeah, I think from the city standpoint, we're still using the water. Oh, yeah, they always have to pay for the water. Yeah. I mean, if the bad thing I would, the bad thing, you know, 10 people do it. Eight out of the ten are going to be completely honest with you. Two of them are going to be, you know. 
Uh, yeah, I, I, as long as they give us prior notice and don't have a leaky toilet and say, oh, I was watering my lawn, well, you should have told us before you started watering your lawn in order to have that discount available to you. So, so you go to their house and they don't have a garden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's still water their lawn, I suppose. I mean, it's... So you, you want them to go out and read the meter before they start? No, just to let us know that they're going to be using water that isn't going down the sewer. And if indeed they have a much higher reading for those summer months, then they get that sewer discount. But So, so we'd have to go back and average them like the last six months before they started? Yeah, yeah, I don't think that's a big deal. I don't think I'll have that many. If somebody's uh, got a leaky toilet and discovers it, and they have let us know they're going to have a garden, you know, tough luck. So, so they can't cheat it that way. No, but you're saying that a leaky toilet... If a leaky toilet's going to go right this way. It's the sewer, though, that mm -hmm. water does. So if the water, if, if you got a, a leaky... I just, I, I think we're just opening ourselves up, because the next person's going to come in and say, well, that I want to have just use my water for feeding my chickens. I was just going to say, I want it, yeah, or the goats that I have in my backyard, or whatever it may be. I mean, we're just opening. <laughs> I, hey, I, I lived on East Market. There was goats in somebody's backyard. As a, as, as your water operator and superintendent, we put this in effect because we have currently two wells. We're, keep in mind we're constructing another one, but let's just forget about the one we're constructing. We have two wells. Okay, we're getting to be dry like we were when we put this into effect. We lose one well, we can't meet the demand that we have now. So if you, if, if you green light and say, well, just let us know you're watering, and we start letting people water, just so they can mow, or I mean, we're not going to we're going to be in a bigger, yes, we're going to be in a bigger problem than what we have now. I feel that we have, as the water department and as the city, given people the option to install an op another meter to do what they want to do. If they don't want to incur that cost, I don't think we should risk our system. No, I totally agree with you. I think we have enough in our ordinances already, and if we don't think we brought back for discussion. You know, and our, and our system's on more of a supply now. I mean, we're watering over there, and we're watering over here. Yeah. I mean, we're having you know, twice the ball fields. Yeah. yeah. Two and a half times twice the ball fields. As much as I would love to, I just don't think, I just think we're, and, and I said it before, they can have an irrigation yeah. meter put in. We're giving we we're giving that whether they know they have that option or not, that's giving them a discount right there. At the end of the day, it's gonna pay for itself. It will eventually pay for yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We don't need to make uh, no, no, just a, yeah. no action. No action. Then, uh, and then just a thank you from Steve McMill. Um, to maintenance staff over at the Pleasant Grove Park. Huh. All right. Saw somebody fishing there this afternoon. Two dogs swimming there. Dogs aren't allowed to park. Dogs aren't allowed to park, <laughs> which we need to change. school street which we weren't going to be at until a later date um, with construction hopefully starting for the school next month we thought it was better to get out of there um, Brandon and I had some concerns about Washington Street getting completed before sauerkraut days so our 
chain of events for the next six weeks are going to be to finish Second Avenue, obviously finish the storm and everything left on Washington to get that hole again. Have Second Avenue School Street done. Um, School Street won't be whole except for, I mean everything except for by the intersection which will have a standpipe coming out where we're going to need to make our connection again when we go down Washington. But we're going to do that, um, Second Avenue, and then start on Market Street and work our way out. And if we have time in between when this is done, in sauerkraut days, and we will start on the other side of 30, working our way this way. We just don't want to have any any obstacles for the people and the traffic. And we just thought it was going to be better. With uh, the stuff we found on this portion of Washington, we didn't want to find any more surprises and to set us back. And it wouldn't tear up the intersection, so. I was getting kind of nervous about it. Um, we've been a little behind due to the Alliant gas project on Washington, so. And we don't want that to happen to us again. So, so we got that. Um, with that being said, I have talked to the project manager for Brecky. He said this was a very aggressive timeline. Um, he. He doesn't know where this timeline came from exactly was his words he told me. So we he doesn't think we're that far behind. Um, we have some concerns, but they're going to do their best to get going. Um, Third Avenue was actually a little hiccup. This right here, this intersection was a little hiccup. So hopefully, hopefully all that stuff starts going a lot smoother for us. So. That's it for the engineer. Um, we have been watering like crazy out at the sports complex. I think that's eaten up once you guys say probably 90% of the summer elves time. Mm -hmm. um, the other 10% trying to help drain me in the parks. So um, there is really no downtime with those kids. Um, other than that, the tree at the splash pad is leafing and seeding out right now. There is no way to keep those out of that splash pad. Yeah, yeah well, there is, but there's no feasible way to keep it out of the splash pad. I had a call at City Hall today saying they thought the pool was dirty and there was something wrong. Um, it's literally another two weeks and we'll be through this and we'll be good to go again. So, anybody? gives you any concerns about the, it's literally the stuff falling out of the trees, the seeds. So, that's all I have. Can we get a condition for Travis? All the trees taken down that we need to take down? No. And poles? Uh, for what? I mean, I don't know, is he done taking down trees in town? No, we have a couple. We did get a lion to take down one for us. Um, Mike has questionable ones in front of his and we'll know when we get over there for the water main. We still have some out at the cemetery that I'm hoping with as dry as it's been we can get those done. Where did I see a tree at? Oh, where Chris Mullen lives on the corner? Yep, that's on the list. And there's, there's two at Bodell or at the park. The yep. Bodell ones that's on the list. Just since it came up, the one that goes down in front of my house, does that just dead end then? Yes. It doesn't come back and connect? No, that's for future growth is their, is their plan now. If you look in on first, going across first street, uh, first avenue, sorry. First <laughs> avenue. There's a candy cane, I call them a candy cane, it's a flushing hydrant. Mm -hmm. So what that does is that stubbed out for future but you also want to make sure that that water doesn't get stale. So we'll go in there and periodically flush that water to make sure our water content. Plus it also gives us another testing spot to make sure our water quality is good too, so. You know, Steve, Steve, Travis? First one. Uh, just a couple things. We are in week four of summer ball. Um, so we had our first games last week. So we got uh, 
games this week, and then we got two weeks left after that, so everything there is going good. Um, I've just been mowing, uh, weed eating, all the all the things I do every day. Um, I do want to say thanks to the summer help kids because watering is not, it's an easy thing to do, but it's not a fun thing to do. I mean, it gets boring for them and they're they're taking it really well and they're helping us out a lot. Um, and then Brian as well, he's been a huge help for me mowing and things like that. So they've done really well so far. It's uh, nice to see. Um, the only other things I'm still working on sponsorship stuff for the sports complex, um, and I've been helping out with all the watering and things like that. So, other than that, we've got some events coming up for sauerkraut days. Um, we'll have our back to school night again, event again at the city park, and I think that's about it. Any questions for Drayton? Please, Department. Just kind of want to highlight a couple things on the report. Obviously, it was a busy month looking at the numbers we had reported for the number of reports we took. Encourage uh, the public to, uh, we, have, we had 14 collisions between Mount Vernon and Lisbon last month, um, which is way high for our average uh, per month. We usually average four or five um, from that. So most of them, fortunately, were um, back, you know, smaller accidents, backing, not paying attention backing into a parked vehicle or something like that because there's probably a lot more activities going on, a lot more activities at the parks and streets and stuff like that. So just encourage people again. I know it's nice out. Everybody wants to be out enjoying, but slow down and enjoy. Um, don't let that ruin your day uh, from that perspective. And down that, um, busy time. We are we brought on two new reserve officers, um, one from Lisbon, Nick Mackey, um, currently going through the training program. So hopefully by Star Trek days, hopefully by Heritage days, but I don't I'm um, very optimistic on that one. Um, but by sauerkraut days, you'll probably see them out for them and uh, put us back full staff for the reserve program, too, which is great. So, done that. That's all I got. I got Monster was deployed twice. Once was for, for narcotics, the other one for a missing person. Yep. So, when he found the missing person, did he attack him? No, it was, he, he actually didn't find the missing person, but okay. he came out to assist on that one. But, <laughs> Um, oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, both no, no, that would be more of your part. The reports included he had uh, uh, something yeah. else he had planned with tonight, so he couldn't be here. But I also sent off that analysis. Uh, he's going to come next meeting and discuss that. So. I mean, I, that's just amazing that they don't have any drop calls. I mean, mm -hmm. Uh, what he's what he's done in the last couple of years. So. <clears throat> Fire chief. All right, uh, we've been extremely busy. Um, some of you may know there was a fire on First Avenue, a garage fire. Um, I don't know how many of you follow Facebook, but uh, the family there um, decided to post that the following Monday that they were going to be selling cookies and lemonade from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m all proceeds were going to the fire department. Uh, so in the course of that three hours, they raised over $800, and then they matched it. So it was a $1,600 donation for three hours worth of the cookie sales and lemonade sales. So uh, kudos to them, uh, kudos to the, the other fire department guys um, for all the work that they did. Um, also, Montburn Fire was involved with that. As well as I did call in, uh, Travis was gone, I called Rodman in. Um, we used the inloader, uh, which was a very valuable tool, uh, basically to lift up the side wall where there was fire burning underneath it. So he was able to pull that back and lift it up so that we, we could get further fire um, extinguished. So uh, just thanks to all involved with that. And um, obviously it's a sad when somebody loses the uh, property like that, but. I think uh, there's always good stories, you know, involved with that too. So I talked to the occupants, and I don't think that they've had their insurance company show up yet. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I've, I've also met with them, and um, yeah, it's a. Uh, it's a different time right right now between insurance adjusters and contractors. It's a. Uh, mm -hmm. It's hard to get a hold of people. So. Um, I'm also working on getting a bid for. Um, the grass truck, um, and we'll repurpose that grass truck to public works, and then also um, 
we met with Alexa last week to go over some options with the new pumper truck or potentially refurbishing one of our old ones. So uh, that'll be down the road, but that's uh, that's going on with that. And nothing else fire related. Well, sauerkraut days, we are going to be doing the bathtub races. And of course, the pancake breakfast and Labor Day. Any questions for me? City Administrator? I'm at the Sports Complex. Um, it could have been the Monday after the last meeting with YTT and Dave Schmidt to go over the grass situation out there. Um, we came to the conclusion that they were going to reseed it. Um, haven't decided yet on who's paying for what yet, but um, we're going to work that out. The grass north of the road looks better than what's in the south. So the north was the planted north. sooner. We did the last that. window. Okay. Yep. And the south was done like on one of the last two days of the window. Yeah, not we enough. Hoping it would be enough. Yeah. But. So, um, but there is with Sudas, um, we can make them go reseed it. But there is language in there that doesn't hold them accountable for that grass seed to grow, and it's probably rightfully so. I mean, they're not. You know, you got to have ideal conditions. But um, thanks to the public works staff for grading, um, we kind of got a sprinkler system set up out there. It's not perfect, but um, what would you say, 85% of that's covered? Pretty close. 80 to 85% of that's yeah, covered. Yeah, all the tripods out. Yep. So we uh, got all that going, and um, Drayton's been pretty religious about getting out and watering it. So um, our hope is, is that that starts filling in those gaps, and we'll just, it'd be really nice if it rained. But, um, yes, anyway, service. Like, on the property, is it like where the pavilion was going to be? Or What's that now? You have water service on mm -hmm. the property. Yes, right? yep. Uh, there's a spigot there. That, that, was, the that was actually stuffed into the building. Yeah, that was into the building before it fell out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, are we back on the schedule to build the building? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're, we're waiting on the demo mini hole so that we can put the footings in. So, as soon as we get that, we'll get out there and, and get that done and then get, get that building going. So. Um, I also met with John's Electric uh, for the wiring of that, um, and also I've been working with Alliant to get power to that area. I think we signed the, the last meeting, we signed the agreements with them. So, uh, moving in the right direction. I am having a meeting next week with YTT. Um, I want a status update on the Ball Diamonds. Um, I know this company that they're working with is, is hard at work, and we're trying to, trying to get some progress to get that going. So. Um, we did have a contractor come out, uh, reference the windows out here at City Hall. Um, I don't have a whole lot of details yet, but um, they'll be working at that um, to fix that issue. Um, last time, I, I sent the email out about those historic downtown signs that kind of go on the black flag or the black poles. Last time I was supposed to bring them up, I printed off a copy of the picture of what they look like and then forgot to mention them. So I sent the email out. I didn't get any issues back from anybody, so I'm going to have them go ahead and order those before their budget ends, unless I hear different. R&W is complete at the History Center. I think all things considered, they, they did a really, really nice job, and um, it looks better than I thought it would. Um, it was a lot of money to make it look like that, but at the end of the day, it's a, it looks good. Uh, new well was started out um, in the Nature Park. Um, I don't have a status update, but those are kind of a, like a waiting game. So I've heard heard nothing um, of negative thus far. So that's good. Uh, the GIS company is starting to send crews out to the cemetery. So if you see people out there with tripods and computers, that's that's what they're doing, they're plotting all that data. They finally have, the, sounds like they got the software with the names and everything, so now they're coordinating their software to locations, so uh, moving forward there. Um, as we mentioned, the Alliant gas project held us up on Washington Street. Um, reason for that is Alliant is putting a gas line, they're moving their line from the west side of the road to the east side of the road. So all those properties on the west side have to be bored under the road. We didn't want to pour new concrete and have them bore and disturb that soil, so we waited. 
Um, and I know it's been painful for people along that street. I apologize, but we just didn't want to have to do this twice and uh, have issues later. So um, as you can tell here now, they're paving. Um, it is our hope that we're off Washington Street by the end of next week. Um, so that would be driveways done. Um, the only thing would be left then would be later on down the road deciding how we're going to fix the rest of the surface, whether it's milling or then plating or then milling, whatever that is. Um, John, do you want to talk about the library and your stuff? Or do you want to buy Amy? I don't don't know what she wants released at this time. Okay, so we'll, we'll wait on that. Um, and then uh, I met with Travis and Drayton today, uh, tried to get a plan together to have softball again for Sour Prep Days at the park. So um, we'll be working on that and coming up with a plan to try to figure that out. Uh, questions? Are there any questions? Just enjoying working two jobs all the time. Okay. Marsha returns someday. <laughs> Do we have any estimate? Uh, it changes, but soon we're hoping. Right. Hopefully towards the end of the week. Yeah. Sure. I don't really have much. I don't have anything. Yeah. Uh, we'll have the Friends who live in the library will have a plant sale Friday and Saturday in front of the library with the indoor and outdoor plants. And uh, they'll also have a roundup with brothers in September for the Valley Park of the New Nation Library. Sauerkraut uh, Committee is going to have a roundup with brothers in August. That's all I have. Mike? Nothing? Thank you. I don't have anything. The only thing I got is just, I just want to. Thank the citizens of Lisbon for being patient with this watering project. I mean, it's pain enough for everybody, but I mean, overall it'll be beneficial to everybody too. So thank you for being patient. Thank you for all the city workers for the work they're doing. And that's it. Meeting adjourned.